Hello and welcome to WaveScan, the international DX program from Adventist World Radio. Researched and written in Indianapolis by Dr. Adrian Peterson and produced in the studios of WRMI Shortwave in Miami, Florida. I'm Jeff White. Today on WaveScan, the end of another era in the land of a thousand hills, Deutsche Welle is closing its Kigali relay station. We'll also have our regular Australian DX report from Bob Padula. And our special QSL of the week is a temporary feeder link. The unwelcome news that another important shortwave station is closing is making headline news in the international radio world. On this occasion, the station that is closing is a Deutsche Welle relay station, and the location is at Kigali in the small African nation of Rwanda. Ray Robinson has our story. Thanks, Jeff. Identified in travel brochures as the land of a thousand hills, Rwanda is a small landlocked, densely populated, independent nation located almost in the center of the southern half of Africa. The entire country is quite hilly, it's only 150 miles long and 75 miles wide, and it's surrounded by four other independent countries. The history of Rwanda goes back into the early days of tribal migrations in Africa, and it's understood that the first peoples to move into the territory now known as Rwanda were the Pygmy people known as the Twa. Then, two to three thousand years ago, various sub-tribes of Bantu peoples also moved into Rwanda, and they settled into their territories where they became known as the Hutus and the Tutsis. At an international conference in Berlin in 1884, the Rwanda territory was assigned to Germany as part of German East Africa, and the first European to explore the area was Dr. Oscar Bowman eight years later. During World War I, Belgian forces occupied the territory, and in 1962, Rwanda was separated from neighbouring Burundi and given independence in its own right. In 1994, Rwanda suffered through a horrendous civil war, during which anywhere up to a million people were killed. These days, Rwanda is an independent, self-governing country with a population of 12 million. Its capital city is Kigali, with 1 million. The peoples of this nation speak three official languages, English, French and Kinyawanda. Communication by Morse code wireless was introduced to Rwanda with the installation of a wireless station in Kigali in 1930. This station operated with French TSF equipment and it was established for communication with a similar station in Bujumbura in neighbouring Burundi. A small regional network of similar TSF stations was subsequently installed throughout the twin territories of Burundi and Rwanda. It was in 1963 that the German shortwave station was constructed in the rolling hillsides a few miles east of Kinyinya, 10 miles north of the city of Kigali. This African shortwave station was the first relay station established by Deutsche Welle, whose head office at the time was in Cologne in West Germany. Their first transmitter was a small unit rated at just 600 watts, and it was taken into service on August 30th, 1963. The morning service was transmitted on 7225 kHz and the evening service on 7295 kHz. The earliest known monitoring report of the new Deutsche Welle Kigali was from a listener in New Zealand who heard this original low power unit in February of the next year, 1964. At the time it was suggested that the power level would soon be raised to 10 kW. Initially, programming for Deutsche Welle Kigali was pre-recorded on tape at the studios in Cologne and flown out to Kigali where it was subsequently played on air in parallel with the same programming as was heard from the Deutsche Welle shortwave station at Ulick in Germany. Occasional off-air programming on shortwave from Germany was received at Kigali and fed into the low-power transmitter for reception in nearby areas in Africa. When the 600 kW transmitter in Kigali was not on the air with a program relay, the station engineers reduced the power level and operated it as an amateur station under the call 9X5 for communication with Deutsche Welle headquarters in Germany. 
On October the 24th, 1965, a 250 kilowatt Marconi shortwave transmitter from England, model BD272, was officially inaugurated, and this replaced the temporary low power unit. The antenna systems at this stage were made up of a pair of curtains with a passive reflector in between and also a set of omnidirectional quadrant radiators. At the same time, a receiving station located 12 miles from the transmitter station was also taken into service. Rhombic antennas at the receiving station were focused on Germany and they received the program feed via a shortwave transmitter located at the Deutsche Telekom communication station at Bockhagen in West Germany. A second 250 kilowatt Marconi transmitter, model B6122, was installed in 1969 and taken into regular service in July. At this stage, the antenna farm was made up of four pairs of curtain antennas with a passive reflector in between and also the omnidirectional quadrant. The 10th anniversary of Deutsche Welle Kigali was celebrated on October the 24th, 1975 and many Rwandan government dignitaries as well as senior German personnel attended the event that was staged in the transmitter hall at Kininya, overlooking the national capital 10 miles distant. A modernization program was implemented at Deutsche Welle Kigali in 1992, with new transmitters and new antenna systems replacing all of the 30-year-old equipment. Two BBC-ABB transmitters at 250 kilowatts, model SK53C32P, were installed and activated in 1992, and two more Marconis of the same model were activated the following year, 1993, together with four pairs of new curtains. Quite recently, Deutsche Welle announced the closing of their African relay station, effective at the end of the current B14 transmission period next weekend. The station will be effectively closed and completely dismantled. Currently, the Deutsche Welle Kigali station can be seen on Google Earth, directly north of Kigali in Rwanda. Clearly visible are the two transmitter buildings adjoining each other and the two sets of feeder lines leading north and south to the two separated areas of the antenna farm. The international radio world is saying goodbye to one of the world's important shortwave relay stations and we too would say to Deutsche Welle Kigali goodbye and thank you for a work well done. We're living in an era where there seems to be a cavalcade of shortwave stations leaving the air forever. However, we might add, as all international radio monitors know so well, the shortwave bands these days remain overcrowded with a host of active broadcast stations. Thank you, Ray Robinson of KVOH, for that report.
Now some international shortwave broadcasting news. There's some frequency changes notified by the Spanish that's the Spanish external service. That's the external exterior service of Spanish national radio. You may recall that the station resumed its shortwave transmissions earlier this year. The current schedule is as follows. On Saturdays and Sundays, 1500 through until 1900, on four channels, 9620, 11940, 15490 and 17755. And those four frequencies are also used for daily programs when the transmissions are on the air between 1900 and 2300. Broadcasts intended for North America, South America, West and Central Africa and the Near and Middle East. Now some news about unofficial broadcasting stations broadcasting to Korea. These tend to use broken relay stations provided by international broadcasting services. Radio Free North Korea. Current schedule is 12.30 to 13.30 using 9330 from Dushanbe. And Korean Nippon no Kazai. 1300-1330 using 9950 from Taiwan. And 1300-1400, the voice of the wilderness, using 11860 from the relay station in the Philippines from Radio Veritas Asia. And 1300-1500, Korean Radio Free Chosen on 7515 from Tashkent in Uzbekistan. Those four transmissions are all in Korean to North Korea. Now, some further shortwave station news. Bible voice broadcasting frequency change and a schedule change. 21480 from Madagascar. 1100 to 1200 in English on Saturdays to East Asia. That's an extension of the transmission program which was formerly 1100 to 1130. And 1130 to 1145, 21480 from Madagascar, English on Sundays. And that replaces the former program in Japanese at that time. Now, test broadcasts of Deutsche Welle have been taking place in preparation for the close down of the Kigali Miranda relay station at the end of March. These tests have been heard by European monitors as follows 0300 to 0310 on 11960 from Isidon in France to East Africa in Swahili. And 0335 to 0345, the same frequency, 11960, from Yerevan, Armenia, also in Swahili. And 0400 to 0410, again on 11960, from Isidun in France, in English. And finally, 0415 to 0430 on 13610, from Isidun in France, in English and there to East Africa. And those frequencies could well be used as replacement frequencies for Kijali or Kigali outlets which are to be taken into use for the new transmission period. Tajikistan. Frequency change for the voice of the Khmer. This is a brokered station, a brokered broadcasting service. It uses transmitter at Dushanbe. The new, new schedule is 11.30 to 12.00 on 17.860 to South East Asia in the Khmer language. That's on Thursdays and Sundays only. Replaces the former daily service on that frequency. 
A new religious broadcast by the Babcock transmission provider is known as Follow the Bible Ministries. It's scheduled 1900 to 1930 on 12050 from the Ascension Relay Station to West Africa in English on Sundays only. And KVOH, the religious broadcasting station in the USA. Station currently uses only two frequencies. 11775 from 1400 to 2000 in Spanish on Mondays to Fridays. The other frequency is 9975 which is used between midnight and 0600 with a transmission period which is variable from day to day. And WINB, another broadcasting station in the USA, is currently listed for only one frequency, 9265, and that's on the air between 12.30 and 23.30 with English and Spanish programs, but there are variations in the times and the languages used by the station. Now, some monitoring notes made here in Melbourne recently. Propagation into Melbourne in the 7 MHz band and our pre and post sunrise windows continues to be good, dominated by short, that's darkness, path transmissions from Asia, Europe, Africa and the Middle East. Now, this is the summary of some occupancies noted recently here in Melbourne, which will be of interest. In the time span 1745 to 1800 and less otherwise indicated. A lot of activity in this band from China. In fact the band is dominated by broadcasts from China Radio International. So here are some of the frequencies. 7205, the voice of Turkey with English, signing on at 1830. Same frequency, 7205 is used by China Radio International from Beijing with Esperanto, that's 1745 to 1800. 7235, England, Ebra Radio, via the Wolferton Relay Station in the full full day language. 7250, All India Radio in Malayalam. 7275, the Korean Broadcasting System from the transmitting station at Kimjae in the Korean Republic in Korean. 7305, the voice of the Islamic Republic of Iran in Russian from signing on at 1750. And the Vatican Radio on 7360 from Santa Maria de Galleria in Ukrainian. And on the next frequency, 7370, Radio Romania International in Romanian. And 7380, China Radio International from the Seric Relay Station in Albania, broadcasting in German to Europe. And 7460, the Voice of America with its Diwa radio program from Thailand, from Udorn, broadcasting in Pashtu. And 7480, the Voice of America from Sri Lanka, from the Iranawula Relay Station, broadcasting in Kurdish. And the same frequency, 7480, Baha'i Radio, from broadcasting from the relay station at Kishinov in Moldova, in Persian, between 1815 and 1830. And another frequency for the Voice of America, Diwa Radio, from Thailand, from Udorn, is 7495 in Pashtu. And 7505, the BBC from its relay station at Nakhon in Thailand in Pashtu. And 7510, Ibra Radio via the Yerevan Armenia relay station broadcasting in the Sultai language. And right at the top end of this band, 7600, station known as the Sound of Hope broadcasting from Taiwan with programs in Chinese and China Radio International 
7335 broadcasting from a transmitter site near Beijing in Croatian and 7300 China Radio International from the transmitting site at Kashi broadcasting in Arabic. So quite a lot of activity in the 41 metre band in our morning period, that's the pre-sunrise period here in Melbourne. That's all we have time for in our episode of the Australian DX Report, which came to you from Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. I'd just like to remind you that we offer full detail QSL cards showing Australian scenes and wildlife for correct reports received for these broadcasts. We also offer an email QSL service for reports sent by the internet or email. Full details about the QSL service are available at the Electronic D Express homepage, which is simply edxp.org. So until our next program, this is Bob Padula in Melbourne, in Victoria, Australia. Wishing you all good listening. Thanks for being with us and good DX. See you soon. Thank you, Bob. International Radio Monitor Andreas Lubnow in Bodenteich, Germany, tells us the story of his interesting QSL letter from Radio Netherlands. Back on December 19, 1981, Andreas was listening on his shortwave radio to the communication frequency 24040 kHz. This station, located near Rambouillet in France, was operated by the French Post Office, and at the time, it was carrying a program feed on behalf of Radio Netherlands in Hilversum, Holland. For a period of three weeks, the Intelsat downlink equipment that received the normal satellite feed from Radio Netherlands to its then relay station at Antananarivo on the island of Madagascar was undergoing a period of scheduled maintenance. During this time, Radio Netherlands took out a relay via a 30-kilowatt single sideband transmitter some 20 miles southwest of Paris in order to relay the programming from the studios in Holland to the transmitter in Madagascar. The QSL form letter received by Andreas Lubnau in Germany verifies the temporary programming relay via the communication transmitter in France. It was signed by Jonathan Marks, who was DX editor at Radio Netherlands at the time, and the letter is numbered in sequence as Limited Edition Verification Number 120. And we end today's edition of Wavescan with some music from Rwanda. This is Hallelujah by the He-Man Gospel Choir of Rwanda. Thanks for listening to Wavescan, the international DX program from Adventist World Radio. Research and written in Indianapolis by Adrian Peterson. Next week on this program, Railway Radio in Australia, Part 2. The story of a lonely radio studio in an isolated area of Africa. Our Indian DX report and our special QSL of the week will be in long distance on medium wave. Reminder that we have several QSL cards available for your reports on this program. Send your AWR and KSDA reception reports for Wavescan to the AWR address in Indianapolis and also to the station your radio is tuned to, WWCR, KVOH, or WRMI, or to the AWR relay stations that carry Wavescan. Remember, too, you can send a reception report to each of the DX reporters when their segment is on the air here in Wavescan. Those reports are from Japan, Bangladesh, the Philippines, Australia, and India. They will verify with their own colorful QSL card. Return postage and an address label are always appreciated. Our wave scan address in Indianapolis is box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, USA. That's wave scan, box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, USA. Our email address is wavescan at awr.org. That's wavescan at awr.org. I'm Jeff White at WRMI in Miami. Till next week, good listening, everyone. Sunday.